Frost Nixon Movie Review. So this is another one of my scripted movie review series in which I go back to my weblog and I take a review I wrote years ago and just talk through it to make a YouTube video out of it for whatever that may or may not be worth. I, I mention that in particular in this case because this is one of those movies that was a big, dear, big deal 10 years ago, uh, but everyone seems to have forgotten about since. Or I don't know, maybe it's just me. I, I never hear this movie brought up anymore. Maybe I'm just hanging out with the wrong crowd. Let me know. Do, do people still talk about this movie? At, at any rate, it was a big deal 10 years ago. It, it got a fair amount of press at the time. Um, it's a fictionalized, uh, dramatized uh, reenactment of these famous interviews that Richard Nixon had with the TV show host David Frost, which I had never heard about before. Now, I, I was born in 1978 after all this had finished, um, but, you know, I, I'm a bit of a history buff. I took modern American history courses in college. I should be up on this stuff, and I, I never heard about these interviews uh, before these movies came out. Uh, and, in fact, the Wikipedia entry on this film, if, if you go to it, uh, has some what you might call nitpicks, or maybe they're more than nitpicks, about the film's accuracy. So, uh, in the movie, this interview is supposed to be this huge television event. According to Wikipedia, it wasn't really, which explains why I never heard of it before this movie came out. Uh, also, in the movie, Nixon is completely ambushed by the questions on Watergate. Apparently that was not true either. He was not ambushed by those questions. Um, and then the director's commentary, uh, which I recommend if you get the DVD with the director's commentary on it, it's worth watching, points out that a lot of the conversations in the film were fictionalized, uh, including some of the more dramatic interview moments. So, you know, when you're, when you're watching the movie, they've got this dramatization of these televised interviews in which there's some really dramatic stuff going on, most of which, a lot of it, which was fictionalized. That did not happen uh, that way in the real television interviews. So what to make of all this? Uh, I was, when I found out how much of this movie was either fictionalized or not based on real history at all, I was a little bit peeved. And, and this is subjective, admittedly. This, this depends on kind of your view of how historically accurate a movie should be. <clears throat> but my general view, and, and the, again this is just my personal opinion, is for movies that are all about spectacle and drama, or more, mostly spectacle, I tend to cut them a lot of slack. For example, when I watch Spartacus, I don't really care how historically accurate it is because it's this, these big set pieces and huge battles and it's an action. Uh, you know, same with something like Titanic or same with something like Tombstone. Uh, if, if it's a big action spectacle, I'm, I'm willing to cut the movie some slack if it's not entirely historically accurate because the history is not the main point, really. It's loosely based on the history, but the spectacle is the main point. With a movie like this, though, Frost Nixon, which is all about two people sitting in a room talking, I'm not sure how much slack you can cut it, because to me, the interest I have in this conversation is proportional to the degree I think it's historically accurate. So if I think that this is the dramatization of a real historical conversation that took place, then I'm quite interested in it. If the whole thing is fictionalized, though, and it's just two people in a room talking, then uh, why am I watching this? Is my personal opinion. You, you may have a different criteria by which you judge a historical... Um, by which you judge historical movies. That being said... 
I was largely entertained by this movie. It, it wasn't quite as witty or interesting uh, as people had made out. And again, you'll recall that this movie had gotten a lot of positive reviews when it first came out. Uh, but it, it was it was entertaining enough, and uh, I did learn something from it. I mean. Uh, not so much from the movie itself, but from watching the movie itself and from watching the director's commentary and from going to the Wikipedia page and doing some research. Uh, so some of that is outside of the movie, but all of those combined uh, gave me a bit of an education on something that I had not previously known about. And uh, this movie, when this came out, was re was pretty timely. There was an interesting, again, I don't know if anybody remembers this, but 10 years ago, right about the time this movie came out, Condoleezza Rice uh, gave an interview in which she said, uh, by definition, if it was authorized by the president, it did not violate our obligations against the Convention Against Torture. Sorry, I misquoted that. Uh, let me repeat that. By definition, if it was authorized by the president, it did not violate our obligations under the Convention Against Torture. Uh, which every talking head on TV immediately said, ah, oh, that's Frost Nixon. Uh, because the, the big moment in the Frost Nixon movie is when Nixon says, if the president authorizes it, that means it's not illegal. And that was like the big question in Frost-Nixon, is, is that actually the view of, of the United States Constitution? So as soon as Condoleezza Rice said this, uh, she had to correct herself and she actually had to, to say this was not a Nixon-Frost moment. Even though it totally was, right? I mean, let me read that quote again. Uh, if it was authorized by the president, it did not violate our obligations under the Convention Against Torture. It seems pretty clear-cut to me, but I'll, I'll, I'll move on. Um, the other thing which is interesting about this film is even though the conversations themselves are largely fictionalized for dramatic purposes, all of the subject matter that they're debating in those conversations are true. So, for example, when Nixon and Frost debate the bombing of Cambodia or the Watergate cover-up, uh, the conversations are fictionalized, but all the facts that they mention about the bombing of Cambodia or all the facts that they mention about the Watergate cover-up are true. Or at least that's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, the stuff about Watergate, they get into the nitty-gritty a bit in this movie, which is surprising. Um, because, well, well, Watergate's one of those things, uh, it's like a lot of things maybe, it's very simple in the broad strokes. You know, if, if all you know is like there was a break-in and Nixon ordered a cover-up, that's quite simple. If you get into the nitty-gritty of like who did what and who laundered what money and who they were paying to, uh, Halderman and Eichmann, uh, and uh, John Dean, Chuck Colson, the laundered money discussed on the tapes, all these other details. And then at that point, all the details under it becomes quite complex. And really, uh, assuming that people un who were 10 years old or less at the time were not carefully following the news, I think really anyone under 50 years old today doesn't really remember Watergate clearly. Uh, at the time this movie came out, this movie came out about 10 years ago. So, okay, anyone under 40 at the time this movie came out couldn't remember those details clearly. Uh, and the movie just threw around all these names and uh, details without really a lot of background information. Now, in my case, I had actually rewatched Oliver Stone's Nixon. Uh, before coming in to watch this movie. So I felt like I had a little bit of, a, of an edge up. I, I could catch some of this, um, but I don't know, maybe this sounds arrogant, but I figure the average American viewer under 40 uh, was probably gonna be quite confused by what's going on with all these strange names and details. 
That being said, I think you can still enjoy, excuse me, I, I think you can still enjoy the drama uh, and, and just kind of um, enjoy the drama of two people arguing back and forth, even if you're not fully aware of all the details of what they're arguing about. But I, I imagine people might be a little bit confused. Uh, the part about the bombing of Cambodia as well is something that is usually left out of the history textbooks. I certainly wasn't taught about it in school myself. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, maybe with the recent, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ken Burns documentary on Vietnam, some of this is maybe coming back to the public consciousness a bit. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's something that Americans should know and that's quite often left out of the history curriculum. So it was good to see that this movie was bringing that back to the public consciousness a bit with uh, a lot of the conversations in this movie revolving around the bombing of Cambodia. Uh, and it's, it was also nice to see that the whole premise of this movie th uh, takes it for granted that Nixon and his administration were a bunch of crooks. Uh, I remember after Nixon died, there was a bit of an effort to rehabilitate him. Say, well, he wasn't that bad. He did great things with China, diplomacy, stuff like that. Uh, th th this movie is having none of that. Nixon and his whole administration are corrupt from top to bottom. And that's pretty much the... the uh, premise of this movie. So nice to see that that angle seems to be coming back to the public consciousness. It's somewhat unfortunate that a number of the prominent people in Nixon's administration went on to have high profile careers in other Republican administrations, but that's a different subject for a different time. So I'll just leave it there. The final verdict is... I don't know. The, the movie's okay. Uh, there were some things I liked about it. It wasn't nearly as brilliant as everybody thought it was. And it bugged me a little bit that the whole thing was largely fictionalized when it was kind of advertised as a, as a based on real events. Um, but it was entertaining for what it was. And uh, again, just to re-emphasize, even if the conversations themselves are largely fictionalized, the things they're discussing about in the movie is real history. So I, I think you can learn something from it.